Hello and welcome to Izumi's Cozy Cast, the coziest podcast on the internet. <laughs> welcome. Um, my name is Izumi, and this is my podcast. I guess uh, today we are going to be talking about the feel, the fear of failure. I asked you guys to vote on which topic you wanted me to talk about. Um, I asked specifically my members on this channel. Um, what they wanted me to talk about on this episode and fear of failure is what won. Um, if you want to be able to vote on future episode topics, um, become a member and you'll also get a shout out if you are, um, cutesy dumpling and up, which is the second tier and up. Speaking of, this episode is brought to you by our lovely members. We have two members to shout out today. Uh, it's Glack and Lorray Moon. Um, I have another amazing member named Lydia Trinket, um, who I'm also giving a little shout out to. It will not be a normal thing for me to shout out Lil Dumplings as well, but yeah, I wanted to give her a shout out because she's very, very sweet. Anyways, welcome. Um, fear of failure. This is going to be kind of a a weird topic for me because I'm still getting through my fear of failure. Let's get all cozy. Grab yourself a drink, guys. Um, get all get all snug. Sorry if you see red spots on my face. That's just because I've been like this. Um, but, yeah. Fear of failure. Oh, excuse me. I had two New Year's resolutions this year. And I've been sticking to them pretty well. One was to spend more time with loved ones, which I've been doing a lot, and I'm really proud of myself about that. Um, second was to believe in myself more. Um, and that is very hand in hand with the whole fear of failure topic. Um, I, I'm i very scared of failing. And I think most people are, especially as like creatives, people in industries where they don't have conventional jobs, stuff like that. The fear of failure can really hold you back from just doing what you want to do um which is really stupid and it shouldn't but it's just the reality of the situation and I want to talk a little bit about how I'm getting over my fear of failure as well as um debunking that fear of failure if that makes sense so I started doing YouTube in general when I was eight years old I was very young um but then I started doing it on this channel, on Izumi, when I was 11. Excuse me. Um, started doing that when I was 11. And then I ended up having to step away, because mental health and stuff, uh, when I was 15. And then I came back when I was 17, I believe. And I've just been doing it, like, actually pursuing it, pursuing it for the past about year, um, since I've been back. I have gotten the most growth in the past couple months than I've gotten, honestly, ever. Um, back when I did it years ago, before I quit for a little bit, before I took my break, um, I would I would average more views than I get right now, but my audience has never been as loving and caring and interactive and a very good reflection of me as an individual when it comes to morals and um, viewpoints and stuff like that. And that's something I always really wanted. Um, and I'm, I'm finally getting there. And after a year of actually trying to do it fully, um, I've been back on this channel for about two, three years. I'm 19 years old. I came back when I was 17, so about three years. Um, but the last about year and a half was when I was like, I'm going to have a schedule. I'm going to be consistent. Blah, blah, blah. And through that journey, there was a lot of what felt like two steps forward, four steps back. It felt like no matter how hard I tried for a very long time, that I would never get back to where I was, that I would never achieve what I achieved when I was younger, or never achieve what I wished to achieve, at least. Um, because if you don't know, so I hit 30,000 subscribers back when I was 15. 
or 14, 15 around there. And then when I took my break, 5,000 of those subscribers left. So I was, I was at about 25,000 subscribers when I started doing the channel again. And that didn't grow at all. The, or it would cancel it out. So basically the amount I would grow in subscribers per day was the same I would lose per day. That's what it was for a solid year of being back. So that's why I say about a year and a half is that like I've actually been like full on doing it. Um, Cause that held me back for a long time. And then I finally made it even where I was like, okay, I'm not gaining anything, but I'm also not losing anything. It's better than losing, you know? Um, that was kind of like that half year. And then the last year and a half, I finally, specifically in the last couple months, about like half year, I've gotten to the point where I never have a day where I lose more subscribers than I gain. Um, I barely even notice on my analytics, like when I lose a subscriber, which is, which is crazy to think about in reflection to like where I was last year. And I'm so freaking grateful for that. And I am so happy about that. Um, I just, I don't think, like, I, I, I was streaming on my ASMR channel because I also have an ASMR channel, if you guys don't know. Um, and I was streaming on it yesterday talking about Fallen Stars, aka one of my main SMPs on Izumi. Um, one of my main series on Izumi, um, and like season two coming soon, I was building sets and I was talking to my chat about that and they all were so supportive and so excited that I started like getting a little emotional, um, because of that want I'd had for so long to have an interactive audience that really cared about me. And that day I gained almost 100 subscribers from my ASMR channel to my gaming channel, my main channel, this channel. And most of them came from that stream. And that was just a really cool thing to see. Um, yeah, it was really, really cool. And I got a little emotional about it and I kind of, I almost started tearing up and I started thanking them. The VOD is still up, by the way, if you want to go over to my ASMR channel. It's the newest live stream as of this video being out. Um, it's a behind-the-scenes uh, Fallen Star stream. It's just called, like, Cozy Game Night. Um, hey, let me check. It's called... Come chat with me, Cozy Game Night. But, yeah, I did that video. <laughs> that stream. And I got emotional <laughs> a little bit. And um, I'm an emotional person. I am. Uh, I, I'm very in tune with my emotions and I'm very quick to identify what emotion I'm feeling. And I, I cry at a bunch of different emotions. Like I cry from overwhelming happiness, overwhelming sadness, overwhelming anger. Like I'm just a very like the floodgates, they flood, the floodgates be flowing. Um, and I, I used to feel a lot of shame around that. Now I don't. And so, like, I almost started tearing up during the live stream. I then I was like, I stop being sappy. I'm gonna cut out of this, you know. Um, and then I went back to normal. But it was, I it was just having a moment where I was like going on and on about how much I cared about my subscribers and how much they inspire me and how much I wish they knew how much I cared and how much I loved them and how I could not do what I'm doing currently without them. Um, and yeah, that's something that I've really, really noticed recently is that feeling of gratitude. And I just imagine, you know, wrapping back into the whole fear of failure topic, I wouldn't have never gotten there if I would have quit and never came back. Or if I would have quit when I didn't see gaining, I just saw loss of the subscribers. I, I believe full heartedly, you miss every opportunity you don't try to take. A, tr trying 
trying to do something is way more important than protecting yourself from failure from that thing. And I learned that through now finally being at that spot and like it's just really eye-opening being on the other side of it and I'm not all the way there yet for at all you know like I'm not all the way there yet I'm not 100% believing in myself I'm not 100% like I'm gonna get back to where I was blah 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 you know but what I do know is I am 300 subscribers away from hitting 30k again I have the most interactive, most caring fan base I ever have. And I love what I do. How is that failure? I'm not hitting the numbers as quickly as I thought I would, slash wish I was. But why do I have the right to title that as failure in my brain? I don't. I really don't because failing really is just giving up on yourself. That's the only way to fail in my, in my opinion is giving up on what you love. As long as you are trying to better yourself and your life or taking care of yourself in some way, shape, capacity, you haven't failed. And life is so long. Like, I am 19 years old. Excuse me. Almost 20 years old. I feel like I've lived fucking an entire lifetime at this point. Like, I feel like I'm young. You know, I feel like I have a lot to learn. I have a lot to go through and a lot to um, appreciate in the future. And a lot, a lot of things I want to achieve and stuff. But at the same time, this... I get to live this over and over and over again. Like, if, you know, with modern medicine, life expectancy is getting longer. So, like, say I live to 100, right? 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. I get to live the amount of time I've lived four times. Four more times? Four times. Four more times? Four times. 20... 40, 60, 80, 100. Four more times. I'm good at math. Can you tell I was a literature kid? I liked reading and writing over math and science. Um, I did like science, though. Um, <laughs> uh, I get to live what I have lived already four more times. If everything goes as planned, obviously. <laughs> um, that is crazy. Like, with the amount that I have already started to achieve... In just one of those? Holy shit. Like, this did not fly by for me. Like, my late teenage years for sure flew by. But, like, specifically, like, 17. No, they didn't, though. Because I was counting the days until I got to be with my significant other in person. Because I was in a long-distance relationship during those years. They didn't fly by at all. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's just a matter of like, time is a social construct. It really is. And to measure like, oh, if you don't have your life together by 20, you failed. No, <laughs> no. If you can't get it together by 20, try 30. Can't do 30, do 40. Can't do 40, do 50. Can't do 50, do 60. There are people that did not get started in their careers and their passions until their 80s. No matter what age you are, there's always opportunity to follow your dreams and do what you love. And I believe that fully. And now, how to get over that fear of failure? You know, that fear of not doing well. So when I was, you know, failing and not trying and feeling like no matter how hard I tried, I wasn't going to succeed. And I still have days where I feel like I'm failing. Um, just the other day, I cried because I was like, I feel like I'm not doing it 
I feel like I'm not making younger me proud. And then I took a step back and I like, I had an amazing, amazing moment of just like realization and like trying to step away from who I am and think of it from like a third party POV and everything I've been through. And I was like, you're doing fine. You're doing great even. Like, stop being so hard on yourself. Um, that's a big piece of advice I have to give. Think if you were your friend, would you be proud of your friend for making it? You know, would you be fr- proud of your friend for succeeding this long? Uh, would you be proud of your friend for keeping getting on the horse, you know, getting back on the horse? You would be if you're a good friend. <laughs> you would be because you would see that they're trying and that's what matters. Are they trying, you know? And at the same time, take a step back. And if you don't feel like you're trying hard enough, try to figure out how to better facilitate that for yourself. Try to figure out ways you can apply yourself better. Um, I just, whew, sorry, I keep yawning. I just want to make it very clear. I never have judgment towards anyone who is like kind of stuck in the mindset of what if I fail, you know, I never want anyone to feel like I'm judging them for being in that mindset because I know what it's like to be in that mindset. And I know it's very, it's very isolating and it's, it's, it, it's prison. It is, it is being trapped, you know, like you're not trying to be in that mindset, you know? But I think the moment that you step back and you really just like, think about it this way. If you're second guessing a decision you're making because you're scared of failure, you're scared of failing, think about what would the version of you that is successful in your eyes because everyone's measure of success is different. For me, it is being able to do what I love, being surrounded by people I love, and inspiring creatives to be creative um, with what I make, you know? And so what would that version of you, that version that made it, that version that did it, Would they make that choice? Would they quit? Would they try to do this? Would they try to do that? Would they, you know... Well, how would they figure it out? And once you start living in that mindset, it really helps. Oh my god, I'm getting emotional. I can feel it here. I'm the type of crier where I can feel it building in my throat. I don't want to cry on my podcast. Who am I? Crazy. But no, I, I, are you taking a step towards your future or away from it? Is the best way I can look at it. Now, that doesn't work for everyone. Um, it also depends on like what you're doing, what your creative is, what your median is. Medium what your medium is. But for me, for me as an example, since I'm the one talking about this, when I get down in the dimps and I feel like I'm not succeeding and I feel like I could do better and I'm like upset with myself and I'm like, why aren't I doing it? Like, why isn't my video getting out to the people I want to get out to? Whenever I'm getting that mindset, I try, and I don't always do this. Sometimes I forget. Here, I'm going to drink some water real quick. You should do the same. Drink water. I try. I don't always do this. I try to do it more. Um, I try to take a second, take a deep breath. Another yawn. I apologize. Can you tell I'm sleepy? (laughs) Um, I try to take a second, breathe, and really think. 
how would this be told as future me who made it? What would she say next in the story about what's happening right now? And I kind of envision this moment of like being scared of failing in the moment, right? And being like, oh, you know, I remember I was so scared of failing. I had this moment where I broke down. I was crying because I was so scared of what if I don't make it? What if I can't make it? And I wish I could go tell her. This is me talking as the future me, (laughs) the future me I aspire to be. I wish I could go tell her that everything was going to be okay. Now, one day she would have everything she dreamed of. And her hard work is not for nothing. And I cried some more. (laughs) I cried some more normally. I get it all out. You need to release that. You can't hold it in. And then I take another deep breath. And I think, okay, what would I do next? What would she do next? Depending on my mental health, I either take care of myself in some way, shape, or form, because that is very important to do, regardless if you're trying to hustle to become, you know, your best self and stuff like that. Taking care of your current self is also a very big part of that. Your future self cannot exist if your current self is, you know, deplenished of resources that it needs. Um... So it's either like mental health care, physical health care, and then if I'm okay on both of those categories, besides the fact I just cried, (laughs) um, if I'm good in both of those categories, I'm like, okay, she'd want me to do this. She'd want me to work on Fallen Stars. She'd want me to record a Let's Play episode. She'd want me to get some videos pre-recorded. And it helps me get back into that momentum of rather than focusing on the fear, focusing on the goal. Um, A big piece of advice I have for fear of failure that I feel like is a big thing that holds a lot of people, including myself, back is even starting it because you're scared. Even getting into the thing you want to get into can be hard if you're scared of failing. If I never try, I'll never get hurt. But if you never try, you are hurting yourself. Because you're keeping yourself away from something you love. Getting hurt's a part of life. Don't be scared of the bumps along the way to the top of a mountain. Because if you're able to succeed in whatever your brain's version of success is, you climbed a goddamn mountain. And why would you be scared of a little hill on the bottom of that mountain that is getting over fear? And, oh my god, so Markiplier has so many videos about, like, believing in yourself and stuff like that. And that's something I've been trying to work on a lot, is believing in myself. Thinking that I have worth, that I have value, that I matter. X, Y, Z. And what I'm about to say is me also talking to myself because... I don't fully believe this yet. Maybe this will knock it right into me. And I hope it knocks it into you. I care about you. Hey. This is me talking to you. Okay? You right there. Yes. Why don't you believe in yourself? That's not a good reason. Why don't you believe in yourself? That's not a good reason either. 
all I'm hearing is excuses. I'm not hearing a fact that proves why you shouldn't be able to believe in yourself. You should believe in yourself. You should do what you want to do in your heart. Not what he says, not what she says, not what parents say, not what society says. If it's not hurting anyone, and it's not hurting you, do it. Stop holding yourself back. Because do you want to be 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old, regretting never starting? Or if you're already at those spaces in your life, regardless of age, if you're already at the spot of like, oh, I wish I would have started sooner. Well, you didn't. Why is that dictated if you're going to succeed now? You shouldn't. Yeah, you'd be a little further along, but you started when you started. So fucking continue. Stop dwelling on the past and the timeline you have planned out in your head. And start focusing on the idea of, not the idea, focusing on the future, aka who you are creating by what you're doing every day, who you are becoming by acting the way you're acting. I believe in you. You should believe in yourself. You have the right to be believed in. And the only person that's ever going to believe in you all the time is you. So stop being mean to yourself. Stop being petty. Stop being mean. <laughs> because bullying is bullying whether or not it's you you're bullying. Don't be a bully just because it's yourself and you think you could take it. Or you think that it's true. No. If someone has done what you want to achieve, it is entirely possible to achieve. Why should you hold yourself back because you don't think you can do what someone else did? You're entirely capable of doing what someone else did. And if no one's done what you've done, fucking do it. Fucking try. Do it. Like, figure it out. Everything's figure outable. Everything can be figured out if you try hard enough and you Google enough. <laughs> you got this. And it sucks that you don't think you do because you really do. You are powerful, you are smart, you are kind, and you're not egotistical for thinking that you might amount to something one day. And you shouldn't be scared of the what if I fail. Instead, you need to focus on the what if you fly. What if you soar? What if you do so amazing people are in awe of you? That you're in awe of, your, in your, of yourself. That you're able to step back and look at who you are and be proud of who you are. What's so crazy about that? Why is that weird? Why is that impossible? It's not. You are entirely capable of creating what you want to create in your life. It's all about figuring out how to do it. And everything is figure outable. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> I really had to hold back tearing up that entire time. I'm so emotional. Jesus Christ. I just, I love life so much. And I love what it can be. And it's so sad 
when people I care about don't believe in themselves and don't believe they can succeed when I know they can. And then trying to think of myself in that light is depressing, honestly. It is, it hurts to see how I have viewed myself my entire life. Not my entire life. When I was little, I believed in myself, like really little. And then like I the world like stomped on that. Um <sighs> let's let's make a promise. Pinky promise me. Pinky promise me right now. You after this video will get up and do one thing. Just one that is working towards the future you you want. It could be little, it could be big, it could be creating a YouTube channel, it could be uh, recording a video, it could be anything. It could be taking care of yourself mentally, physically, whatever it may be. Everyone's go goals and success is different. I want you to do that for me. And I'll do the same. After this, I'll work on some Fallen Star Season 2 stuff. Because I think that that's going to do really well. And I'm sick of any t every time I say I think that something's going to do well that's mine. I'm so tired of in the back of my mind hearing my inner dialogue tell me that sounds conceited. Don't say that. And I think that also comes with the fear of failure is like the fear of being an asshole, the fear of being egotistical, the fear of not succeeding, but then talking yourself up and believing in yourself and then you didn't amount to anything. That's scarier than anything, I feel like. And I see you and I hear you and I understand that feeling, but fuck that feeling. That feeling is such fucking bullshit because if you try and you try, and you try, and you never give up, you never give up, and your measurement of success is not something that is untainable, because <laughs> the thing is, you also have to be realistic, but realistic does not mean boring. Realistic means, has it been achieved by someone else, slash, is that possible in the laws of physics, you know? Success needs to be more than material things in my eyes. That's why, like, the creativity thing is such a big part of my measurement of success. There's nothing wrong with wanting, you know, financial freedom and stuff like that. I also want that. Um, but that I want to make a full income off of Izumi so that I can spend more time doing what I love. It's not so that I can be rich and famous. Nothing wrong with wanting to be famous. It's just not my measurement of success. I just want to be popular enough that I don't worry about my income and I can do this full time. That's the goal. Are you guys okay if I cry? If you guys don't want me to cry, go ahead and I'm going to tell you goodbye right now. But I really, I have some stuff I want to say and I don't know if I'm going to cry or not. So if you don't want to see me cry, peace. Love you. Thank you for watching the podcast. If you're okay with seeing me cry, hi. Thank you for continuing this video. Or hear me cry if you're just listening, I guess, as the technically since it's a podcast. This is going back to the me saying season two is going to be great. And feeling like that's egotistical. Or feeling like people are rolling their eyes at me. Because I think of part of the feel the fear of failure is also the fear of judgment. And that's kind of what that is for me. Um, no one should ever feel like talking about their series in a way that is their opinion. <laughs> that they think it's going to be great. That they think it's going to do well. That's their opinion. People don't have to agree with that from an outside perspective, but it's their opinion. No one should then feel in their head the voice saying, that's so egotistical. How dare you say that your series is good? Oh, that's so 
rude to other people with series. You know, they've been working just as hard, if not harder, than you. That's bullshit. That voice is bullshit. And I'm hoping I can reach to one of you that feels that way and hears that voice. Hold my hand. <laughs> Hold my hand. <laughs> I understand. I'm really sorry that you hear that voice. And please try to remember that it's not right. It's not correct. Now, people can be egotistical. People can be, you know, people can be, you know, dicks. And people can feel like they talk about their shit like it's the best, it's the best thing since sliced bread. And that's when it gets a little extreme. But just saying that, I think that this series is so good, and I'm really fucking proud of it, and I think it's way better than my past work, and I think that people really like it. That's not egotistical. That's not something you should be judged for saying. That's something that you should be praised for saying, because that's really hard to say. For a lot of people. I love you guys. You guys are... You guys are amazing. I love you. And how embarrassing to be crying. It's not embarrassing to cry. But like, I did not at all think I was going to cry during this podcast episode. And so that's a little embarrassing. When I was like, wow, this is unexpected. Um... I just gotta let it out. You know? Nothing wrong with letting it out. I'm trying to overcorrect myself to get out of this funk. Fear of not succeeding. And fear of people judging me for thinking I might succeed. And how I'm overcorrecting that to try to help with my journey of believing in myself more is anytime I hear the voice saying, oh, you're never going to make it. I immediately say, but what if I do? I am going to make it. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to do amazing things. I am going to grow so much bigger than I ever thought I would. I'm going to be I'm going to have the best fans that I've ever that I could have ever imagined. They're going to be the sweetest people. I'm going to I'm going to be popular online to the point where I, you know, am successful in a sense of I'm able to live off of this income. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to succeed. I'm going to succeed. And I just kind of repeat that kind of stuff and that kind of framework and that kind of that vibe, that energy. I speak that out. I speak that into existence. Manifestation. And then for fear of people judging me for believing in myself, fear of people judging me for saying what I just said. They've probably heard what they're saying and they're judging me. They probably just heard someone else say that to them at some point. That is them hurting and that is them jealous that you are trying to pursue your dreams. So anytime I hear in my head, I almost like, Make it not a me, if that makes sense. Anytime I hear, anytime I say, like, I'm going to do amazing things. Just you wait. Just you wait. Just you wait. Hamilton. Um, Apologize for that reference. Uh, (laughs) Anytime I'm like, just you wait. I'm going to do amazing things. And then I hear a voice in my head or I hear someone in my life. I'm not... I'm not really exposed to these types of people, but they I do bump into them online and stuff that say, isn't that a little autistic for you to say? Like, whoa there. Don't be such a narcissist. You know, that kind of deal. I'm still trying to figure out what the response to that is. And I think that that is okay. I think that the response I should have to that, like the overcorrection I should have to that, is they just wish they were doing what I was doing. They just wish they were as young and pursuing their dreams as I am, you know? Like, 
it's rare to be pursuing your dreams so young and to be ignoring society's standards for what you should be doing in parts of your life. And I want you guys to practice that too. Honest, I'll be a group. Okay, this is a group effort. I want you guys to comment down below some methods you found that help with this stuff. Um, so we can all kind of build each other up. But I want as a like, group effort for all of us to... Whenever we hear that inner dialogue or someone else, um, whatever it may be, I want you to really go the opposite direction with it. So if you hear in your head, oh, you're never going to amount to anything. Or if you hear someone in your life say that, I want you to say to yourself, I'm going to do amazing things. I'm going to be amazing. I am amazing. I am doing amazing things. Because eventually, the goal is you've said it so many times that it overcorrects and you now actually believe you're going to do amazing things. There's nothing wrong with believing you'll do amazing things. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and call the episode here. Thank you guys so much for joining. This was kind of chaotic and kind of all over the place. I'm going to be talking with you guys down in the comments about everything we talked about today because I feel like it was it was definitely all over the place um and i feel like it needs more iteration reiteration um if you guys want a more structured podcast episode about fear of failure i'll do a part two um it's up to you guys let me know and i love you guys so very much thank you for joining me and see you in the next video bye